So I recorded this video yesterday, but I had some issues with the camera and uh, I fixed the issue. Then I recorded it again and then I forgot to press record. So uh, here is a new one. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do the track as I planned to do it. I had a track with a lot of synths that was uh, the uh, the audio was clashing together and it was sounded uh, very muddy and very uh, actually quite bad. I managed to record a little piece of it and it sounded like this. <laughs> So that was the original basis for this video. I plan to mix this track better and, and show you some of my EQing and some of the compression, some of those things. But as I said, I lost the recording, so I have the final audio here. Yeah, but uh, that doesn't mean that we can't go through uh, uh, the tracks and uh, just see what I did. Uh, this track is obviously not finished, it's just something I'm working on, but I added more and more and more and more and more tracks and it just sounded bad. And I'm going to show you some of the things I did here. We can begin with all, all the leads here. I have uh, five different leads. The first one, it's the low end. It sounds like this. So you can hear this one is uh, kind of playing in the low end of the frequency spectrum. And that's because I have uh, the cutoff pretty low here. If I increase it, you will of course hear more in the higher frequency. But this, I think the sound of this synth fits best in the lower end. So that's why I kept the cutoff around the hair and then I added a glue compressor just to even out the spikes a little bit, not too much. So it's only a, a 2 or 3 dB gain reduction. Uh, I then uh, did a high pass to around 200 hertz and then I actually also took off some of the high end hair. Then we have the middle lead here, it sounds like this. And played with the low end, it sounds like this. So that's the lead that uh, lives more in the middle end of the audio or the lead audio spectrum. Again here I have a glue compressor, just some little compression around uh, 2 3 dB and I take off about 200 Hertz on the low end but uh, I leave the high end in here or at least the high end that is available and then I have a uh, another synth with massive X and this one I want to Keep more in the high end. So there you have uh, three leads, uh, low, mid and uh, high. And together they sound like this. Then I have two more. So this one adds more uh, atmosphere to the sound and I think it lives more in the middle high end. And I think there is actually enough room for it. That's why I added it uh, without getting it sounding too much uh, muddy. Uh, in addition, I used the black hole here for reverb to give it some more space. Boosted the high end a little bit here and uh, and uh, did a high pass. Uh, 
And then the last one here. As you can hear, this one is also more in the high end. It's uh, it's kind of more like an effect. So I did a quite a massive high pass here around 760 hertz. So together it sounds. So full disclosure, this, this track is still under construction, so it's not the sound could change change when the final piece is finished. But I think this is kind of the basic uh, the basic uh, sound. Then we have some melod uh, add-on melodies arpeggios to the uh, to the synths, and they also play uh, kind of in their own frequency spectrum. Here we have uh, this one is more in the middle. And this one is more in the high end. And then together it sounds... And then on, on the uh, end of each of these tracks I have a compressor, which is a side chain compressor to the kick. Give some room to demonstrate. I can just uh, play the kick and the lead here and increase this. So it lowers the volume of the uh, lead when the kick uh, hits. Then I have the bass here, which is played uh, by uh, my MOG I have on the side here, and then an arpeggio from Silent. Uh, the MOG sounds like this. It's pretty basic. And here is one thing I did uh, in the beginning of the video here, when I showed you the uh, beginnings of this track. This was actually... Uh, uh, I tried to make a lead on the mog, but I so I when I played the bass, the bass notes were here. So if you listen to the kick and the bass now, it should sound pretty bad. That's because the bass is playing uh, with the kick at the same time, and all and the kick and the bass occupy somewhat the same frequency, so range. So that's why it's difficult to mix it that way and I didn't notice this uh, actually until pretty late so uh, it's it's wise to go through each and every one of your track and just check and see if everything looks all right then I also plan to do some automation on the mog wh while I'm playing some cut off and some distortion to give it some more life and I also plan to record it as a WAV file and then we have a, a kind of more mid-high end thing to play along with the bass I, I said it was silent earlier but it's actually D.Va I really like D.Va so it's, it's it's just it it sounds just great, but it's uh, quite uh, heavy on the CPU. That's actually why I'm upgrading my uh, production PC here in a few weeks. Uh, check out that video if you want to see what parts I uh, plans to use. That's quick and dirty mixing just to get the sound sounding somewhat what I would like to have it. If I didn't record this video for YouTube, I would probably open Spotify here and find a kind of electronic track that sounds uh, more or less like this one, play it back and listen, listen to the levels and uh, use that as a reference to what I'm doing here. And uh, oh, uh, down here there are some more effects, which I have, uh, I think I'm going to talk that much about those. They sound are just atmospheric things. Like the so.
So we can do a comparison, we can play the older track now. Okay, so that was the older track and now the new the new mix. So that's basically it. This is tracking I'm working on. Uh, to sum it up, what I did was I did some EQing. Uh, to, to sum up the basics, I uh, kind of tried to place every instrument kind of in their own uh, place in the frequency spectrum here. Not They can overlap a little, but I think that, free, that frees up some more... Uh, more room and uh, makes the mix sound more clear and uh, yeah it, it just makes it sound better also my uh, compression I, I usually don't overdo it with compression I try to take down two or three dBs on leads at least but that's also of course uh, based on what I'm doing so there's it's difficult to have a rule on it you just have to use your ears if you produce music yourself and have suggestions or notice things I'm doing that could be better, I welcome some suggestions below. That's always interesting. Just keep it civil and it's all good. If you like videos like this, uh, like or subscribe send signals to me that you like it and I will continue making stuff like this. Uh, if you do that, it also tells Google that, hey, they should uh, up this channel in the Google search results, and that's of course great. In addition, I produce music for background music and YouTube videos that's on my website, biokeep.com. You can go there, uh, download the tracks, use it for your YouTube videos if you program a game, yeah, if you almost anything, you just have to credit with a link back to the website, and that's all good. Everything is on the site there. And of course, Patreon. If you if you feel the need for support, there you have some. I have some. Um, I have some uh, tiers where you can get access to a Google Drive with the music if you like that. So with that said, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.